Good morning and welcome to Russell's Garden Centre in the heart of the UK. Today I'm going to show you how to make a luxury hanging basket step by step with everything you need. Now we've been to the garden centre and got these things and I'll go through with you and we'll go through step by step so that you can make your own luxury hanging basket that will be the envy of your neighbours. Okay, so let's have a look at the things we're going to need. Come on. Now these are going to be traditional moss baskets. So we're going to need a wire hanging basket. If you can get one with good chains, sturdy chains, and a nice size like that. This is a 16 inch basket, it's so a sort of a traditional size for the UK. We're going to need a bracket to hold that on to the wall, which will need attaching to the wall to hold it up and get a, a good one, one that would give nice strong fixings because these are going to be heavy when they're planted up. We're going to need some moss, which will act as the liner, and I'm going to show you how to put the moss in and to use that. So, this is fresh sphagnum moss, uh, which we're going to do there. I've got some compost to put that in. Now you can probably get uh, a dedicated container compost or, you, or a multi-purpose compost will do that for you. So we've got here some Westland container and basket planting compost. Now this has got, it's a peat free one of course. Uh, this one has got in uh, a product with water retaining granules. If you haven't got that in the compost that you get then you could get the crystals to keep your compost wet makes it easier with the watering. These baskets take a lot of water. The other thing, there will be some food in the compost but we're going to put extra food in and that might either be in the form of slow release pellets or it could be in the form of slow release uh, tabs like they're already pellets ground together the same and you push them into the compost and it will feed uh, the compost and feed the plants. They're going to be very hungry because it's going to be a lot of them in this thing to make a massive luxury hanging basket. Uh, and if you're using peat free compost then the food is even more important than, than normal. Uh, it's just an alternative to if you don't want to use the, the actual moss you can get these uh, artificial alternatives. This is a wool and moss hanging basket liner but we're going to use traditional sphagnum moss as the liner. Okay, we'll get this set up um, and then I'll talk you through how we've chosen the plants and why we've chosen them. Okay, that's good. So, right, we've got a hanging basket. Now, as I said, we've chosen a 16 inch hanging basket. Now, the very first thing you'll want to do is take off the chains because when you're planting them up, they just get in the way. And also, quite often they come and they're all sort of tangled in. So, I'm going to remove the chains and we can put that back on later. hang it out of the way and then we can sort that out a bit later on. Now what you want to do on your hanging basket is count how many slots around the outside that you've got. We're not going to plant into every hole but we will plant into uh, a, pr a proportion of them as we work our way up the basket to work in towards the top. Now when I counted this basket has got 16 slots around. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, uh, and so on. Now what we've decided and what we know that looks good and works well is in the bottom layer, not, not down here, not in this layer here, but in this first layer of planting we're going to use four of the slots with some trailing plants which will just set the basket up. They'll hang down and they'll flow. They probably won't flower but they'll just give the basket a uh, like a base, like a background of colour and trailing plants to really set off the flowers that will be above them. And we, we need about four plants would do nicely. You could, put, you could perhaps do six but four works well with the numbers. Then in the next layer we're going to do eight. So every other hole we're going to put a plant in. And in, in, in the top you'll probably want between 10 and sort of 15 plants. I want this to be a luxury hanging basket to look absolutely sensational. It's important. It's important to me. But when you see them, you, you just want a massive basket. I know I'm waffling, sorry. Um, but we're, we're, going to make a, we're going to make a luxury hanging basket. We're going to, let's do this right. So we're going to put, I've got 14 plants for the top. Uh, come and have a look at the plants, Millie. Let's, uh, let's work out. Now, for the bottom, oh, I should, should probably just say, 
Uh, the, the theme of this basket when we've gone round and chosen the plants is purple and white with the odd accent which will really make those colours pop and set them off. But the main flower, the main thrust of this the basket and the colour is going to be a purple and white theme. It's going to look absolutely beautiful. So for the very first layer then on the bottom we've uh, got two of these. Nepeta, it's a trailing plant. It, it does get a little flower on look but we don't worry about that. Uh, it's going to trail down so we're going to put those in and then against this Lysimachia. Now this has got golden leaves uh, it's called Goldilocks uh, and it will trail down beautifully they do well in sort of damp compost as well in damp areas now at the bottom of the basket where the water will gather this will help to mop that up and also thrive down there and the, the yellow I'll just show you actually against the purple flowers it really makes the colours pop and sort of highlights the uh, the centres there, so we've chosen that deliberately to help lift the colour of the others. For the next layer up, so that will be this layer here, where we're doing every other one, we've got eight plants, and here we've gone for trailing and semi-trailing plants, some will come down and flow out, and some will grow up slightly or be, they'll be semi-trailing, and for that we've chosen Bacopa, Verbena, that's another verbena in various colours. This is a particularly pretty plant, Brachyscum, more Bacopa, and then there's another on there. So, pretty much of a theme, we've got three types of plants there, and they are, say, all the purples and whites, aren't they? So, they're going to be there. Then in the top, well, we'll, do, we'll go through the top plants when we get to it, but I'm going to show you now how we set the moss into the basket and the preparation that we make to make sure this basket is going to be an absolute stunner because there's a few little things you can do to make sure that it's better. OK, I'll just get set up on my potting bench here and then we'll go through what we're going to do. Right then, so we're nearly ready to do our first layer. But I just want to show you a little thing about the compost preparation. So we're using this uh, Westland container and basket planted mix. Uh, just poured it out of the bag. Now look at it here, look, it's all clumpy and lumpy and you really don't want that. It, it, so you've got to go through and fettle the compost, break it up, crumble it up so that it's as loose as possible. You need the roots to be able to get right into this and get going because the plants are quite young as we start so I'm going to have to go through this. Now this is a good time I think to then add in some extra slow release fertiliser. Now, Since we're moving on to the peat free compost, the peat free compost does not hold the nutrients or doesn't make them available in the same way that the traditional compost used to. So you're going to need to feed more, that's for sure. Now look, we'll add in some of this and let's not be stingy. It tells you how to measure it and how much to use. It says it here, but um, you know, I like to fly that by the seat of my pants. I'm probably going to use, really should read what it says actually, but the right is too small. Pre-mixed with compost. 20 to 40 grams for 10 litres. We've got 25 litres, so we want about 80 grams. I could measure that out. Well, I think that looks all right. I'm going to mix that on the top. Now, the way these pellets work, they have a special coating on. And there's different feeds in each different one, some for the roots, some for the flowers. The way they work is that they uh, gradually release into the compost through a process of osmosis uh, the nutrients and feed. So they don't all come out at once. It's a slow release, controlled release. Very clever. So now we need to thoroughly mix that in. Right through. and make that really lovely and cr crumbly and light and fluffy, as fluffy as you can. If the compost that you've got is really wet, and it might be, it does hold the moisture, 
then put it on a bench and let it dry out for a day or two before you use it because we don't want to put the plants into cold wet compost but these where there's lumps like this we've got to really fluff those up and make the most of that get it nice and light and airy and get that food mixed right through I'm just going to spend a few minutes doing that you don't want to watch me do that and then when it's ready I'll show you how to set the moss up in the basket and then how we add the compost and how much to add for each layer so that so we, we can make this amazing basket okay so I'll be back in a minute right so that's all nice and fluffy now the compost and it's good to go and mix that food thoroughly through so got an empty compost bag don't throw it away just yet or recycle it just yet because what we want to do using a template here is just cut a circle hopefully like this one it'll be black on the inside I'm going to use it to just cut a circle about the size of a dinner plate No prizes for getting a perfect circle, you just want something that's roughly round. These scissors are terrible. My goodness. Let me get my hair cut with those. Just want a circle. Right, we'll recycle that. Recycling. Now we've got this disc of polythene and using the blood scissors I'm just going to make a hole in the middle there like so. You can see that I've made two holes about, didn't it? That's okay. Now this is going to help keep the moisture uh, in the baskets, we're going to put it on the bottom, but first we're going to put the, the layer of the moss. So here's the moss. Now, once again, like with the compost, excuse me a sec, that's a nice coffee, thank you Mickey. Like with the, the compost, we need to fluff up the moss so it's not just clumpy and thick in one place. So tip it out and then I sort of do this, flicking it through and separating it sort of all off like this. And this is just to hold the compost within the basket and to look attractive too. And we don't need too much on the bottom, just enough to sort of set the thing because that, that disc is going to do a lot of that job for us. But once it once you've got it fluffed out and you need a you need a workspace or something like this to work on. Once you've got that, pat it down so you get like a, a pad of the moss, and then you can start to put it in and put it against the frame of the basket and I hope that's clear I'm pressing that in not too hard not going mad here but it's there's a nice flat bit of compost there a uh, bit of moss there make a pad pat it down it helps to have nice big hands actually like that I'm going all the way around and can you see I'm going up to nearly to the top of this layer this is going to be this ring here it's going to be the first one we're going to plant into but I'm bringing the moss just about to the top of it actually because once the compost goes in it that will that will go down that's what I'm aiming for it's sort of nearly to the top of that ring all the way around Take your time on this, you don't want the moss falling out once, the, once any of it's in. And when you water it sometimes, you can channel and find a way out and start to cave out. Now, again, we don't need very much on the bottom, so the thinnest bit on the bottom, because once that's in, once it's up to our, or just about up to our line, of course the beeping lorry arrives. I want to say beeping, it's actually beeping, I'm not using that as a swear word, obviously. We... Should, we... should we just pause that a minute while beeper goes away? 
Right, we're back. Sorry about that. We are a busy working nursery. We're not in a film studio. This nursery's been here for nearly 100 years and we get lorries and the lorries beep. Sorry about that. Right, so remember we're on this moss. We've got it up to nearly up to that ring and it's all pressed in, it's all nice. Now we're going to use the disc that we cut with the hole in, black side down so it doesn't show, and put that in the bottom. And it's just going to act as a little bit of a uh, uh, a stopper, something to stop all of the moisture just going straight through the moss and straight out of the bottom of the basket. This will make a big difference to your basket. Now then we're going to add very carefully compost in. And I'll, once it's in the middle then I'll start pushing it towards the outside with the flat of a hand, pushing it towards the outside of the basket like so. Put too much in at this stage, but so it's, uh, the compost is now. I'm pressing it this way and like this against the edges of the basket, and it's holding. Look, it's already holding the moss in place. With the weight of the compost and pressure. But I'm not forcing it in. We don't want to make a sandcastle. This has still got to be nice and fluffy on the inside for the plants to be able to do their thing, make their roots. Right then. So now we're ready for the first plants, which are going to go into these slots just here. Now if you remember we said we're going to use these Napita. Just take the labels out. A beautiful variegated trailing flower. They'll go just for months. These, these baskets will last six months even in the UK. We won't be putting them outside until probably the middle of May but still you know without any cold weather they should go right until November, middle of November. And then the Lysimachia, the Goldilocks plant it's trailing things again I'm taking them out of the pots. Now when I chose the plants and this is important when you go to the garden centre as well don't go immediately for the one with the biggest flowers and the best flowers and the showiest thing. As long as the plant is healthy get one that's compact that's not in flower yet and that's got lots of potential that it's not trying to do its thing and, and get out of that pot. So these plants I've deliberately chosen smaller more compact ones but still nice and healthy they're not they're not the roots of the, uh, of the litter, as it were. Uh, now, that's a big, these are out of a nine centimetre pot, that's not going to fit through through there. So what we're going to do is very carefully now, just give that a bit of a shake. Just need the roots, like that. I'm just shaking off the, the loose compost. It will reuse it into the compost pile. And now that will easily go through the frame. Now we've got four plants so that I always think of it as a clock uh, and a clock face uh, just to get the spacings right so obviously with four plants we're going to go at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock and I'll put the matching plants opposite each other so they're not all together in the basket. Now did you see how that went in? Just press the moss down a little bit Feed that through so that the plant roots are on the compost and the plant is sticking out of the basket. And I just gently press it onto there. I'm going to do the same thing with the other Lysimachia. Shake off the compost. Gently, I don't want to be pulling these, these roots out, but these are pretty tough plants as it goes. They'll do well in the bottom of here. And then directly opposite now. That just nuzzle that gently into that lovely free fluffy compost that we got there. Remember that? That's there. And then again, the same, exactly the same with the Nepeta. And we'll do this with all of the plants that we're going to put in the basket. We're going to reduce the size of their root ball by fettling it off. That's why when you go to the garden centre, be looking for plants that aren't like rooting out and all pot bound. Look, look they're not pot bound at all, they're all nice and loose and not overgrown in there. So it's important to sort of get to the garden centre reasonably early, but not so early that the basket has to be in size ranges before it can go out in the weather. In the UK, it's a gamble. This year has been particularly difficult. Uh, we've had a frost just this week, um, and these baskets can't go out. When this is done, we're gonna keep it inside for a couple of weeks until the middle of May, and then it will be ready to go outside. So same again, 
and the pita, just lower that moss a little bit, push it through and tuck it down onto that. And the last one, this is quite a bushy one. A little more chair, such a, 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 a large one really. But there we are, that's it. Reduce that. There. Do you know what, what I think I'm going to do on this one, just to lessen the load on the roots, while they get, because I have broken some off there, just to lessen the load and make it easier on the basket until it re-establishes itself. I'm just going to cut that back a bit, like, look at that, give it a bit of a haircut. And then there'll be less demand on these roots as they reform. So lower the moss, plant goes through, gently onto the compost. Now then, this next bit is going to make the difference to the way your, your basket is able to build. So uh, I'll try and explain it the way we do it. We, we do so many of these, we do it kind of automatically, but the, this, the next bit is going to make the, the, the mossing easier. So first thing, take your lovely loose compost over the roots of the plants that you've put in. So that they're fully covered and up to the edge. Now just gently pressing them so that they don't fall out when we move the basket or hang it up. Covering all of those roots nicely. Gently pressing like that. Again, we're not making the sandcastles right then. And now, those are in, they're planted, and they will start to grow. But we're going to make a little mound in the middle of the compost ready for the next layer before we put the moss in. There we are. It doesn't have to be too much, but... There, and that will just, when the moss goes in, it will just help to keep it at the edges. So, just checking the security of it all the way around. The moss is nice and secure. It's held in. The compost not going to start flowing out of the holes. And we'll, we'll put the next layer of moss in. Now, just as we went to nearly to the wire with that layer of moss, we're going to come nearly to the wire on this one. Now, I'm going to make a luxury basket here. This basket, if I filled it to the top, would probably contain about 10 litres of compost. But if I could use a bigger pot or a bigger basket with more compost in, then the plants will have more food, they'll have more space, and they'll do more. They will be better and more luxury. So we're going to use the moss to make this basket bigger than it is. And that's a little trick that will make your baskets bigger too. Uh, so I'll show you that. But for now, we're going to bring the moss just below this top layer here. And it's the same again. Sit it out, make a pad, this time we're using two hands. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see this Millie when I do it, let me just do this. I'm grabbing this and then my fingers are down the back of the thing because I'm going to tuck, look, I'm tucking it in, like tucking a sheet in on a bed so that the moss goes tucked right down to the, the other moss, the first layer. And then it's up to the, just about up to the wire. So, you see, there's no gaps because I use the fingers to, to tuck that down like that. And we'll do that again. Let's just get rid of that bit of plant. Nice and fluffy. You'll soon get a feel for how thick the moss needs to be. If, it's too, if, you, if, if you don't make it thick enough, then the, the compost will fall out, obviously. If you make it too thick, well, it's just a waste, and you'll get less room for compost, but you soon get a feel for how thick it needs to be. Uh, there's something wonderfully tactile about the moss. It, oh, I love working with this. Right. We're going to do the same again. Use my fingers, tuck that in. Nice and neat, as, as neat as uh, a bunch of hairy old moss can be, I suppose. 
but it's it's right down so it's a, a complete wall of moss to retain the compost. Spin him round. Again, that's with the chain off. It makes it much easier to do this. If the, if that was in the way, it'd be awkward. So another couple of those should do it on this ring, I think. again in there chugging it in right down to the, th the bottom layer of the moss and right up to that top ring there pressing it against the side the back of the hand where you get a little bit of a gap this is uh, obviously I've done it in the layer in groups and there's a bit of a gap here you can just put a pat it down and just put a bit of a filler there look be the last bit. Tuck that in, tuck it in nicely. Back of the hand, press it against the frame. Good. There we are. Maybe a little bit thin here, look. And ideally, uh, what I, I forgot to say is you want to be with the with the pad of moss that you make, you want to be spanning across at least one of the bars, obviously, but if you can go across two, it makes it much more uh, secure, less likely to uh, fall out. There's a little bit, it's a bit thin there. It's worth checking at this stage because if any of this moss is going to fall out, this is the bit it falls out from. So just take that bit of extra time and just make that. Perfect, like that. And then that mound we made of compost in the middle sort of makes it naturally, your fingers want to go down the side of that and, and tuck that in. That's Well, that's how my mind works anyway. Just have a sip of the coffee. And we can start adding the compost again. Nice and fluffy, in it goes. Now this time, we're going up to the top of the moss where we went before. So it looks like the basket's almost full, but this is only the middle layer, don't forget. We've got the middle layer and the top still to do. Again, gently not packing it in, but pushing it towards the outside just to help keep the moss secure. And as it goes down, it's starting to make room the plants to go tucked in there. Okay, good. Right, now I've got room for our next run of plants. Now, as we said, there are 16 holes in this particular basket. If uh, you, you have to count them, so there are every, every basket might be different. 14 inch ones for instance might only have 14 holes around um, or 12 it just depends and then get the numbers right but we're going to plant in every other pocket here which will they'll, they'll join together and do it you could if you wanted to plant in every one but I think that's probably overkill for a basket and it would get quite expensive too so let's start with the verbena I'm going to give a little bit of care there we are, look, shake them off. That's it. That's why I've chosen those small plants. They've got nice fresh roots, but they're not overgrown into the pot. I'll just press that down a little bit, gently through, and then nuzzle that into that loose, nice loose compost that's there. Again, I'm not going to be burying the base of the plant into the compost. So that's that's at 12 o'clock. We're going to miss this slot and then we're going to go into this slot here Now we put a verbena there so let's put something different and that one uh, it was a purple and white I'm trying to think what we can do let's make a bit of contrast we could do white or purple I think purple and we'll use a brackish gum here out of the pot ruffle away the compost now 
You might not like this next bit, but I'm going to do it anyway. Got these flowers on. I've chopped them off. Because while this plant's making roots and, and getting itself established in this basket, this new environment and getting ready, I don't want it to be making flowers just yet. I want it to flower all summer long, which it will do much more efficiently if it's got a good root system, if it's ready to go. So I've just removed the flowers. They'll be back in a couple of weeks, don't worry. But now the plant has got the best chance of its best start. So the root ball is as small as is practical, I'm pulling it to pieces. Lower the moss a little bit, just gently tease that through there and on to the compost like so. Now I'm using kind of the, the top outer ring of the basket itself as a guide to how far back to put the to put the plants there. Okay good. So that was a purple. I think we should do a white now, don't you? For that instance, we'll use this Bacopa. Once again, sorry flowers, not ready for you just yet. You'll be back, better than ever. It also encourages the plants to branch out and be more um, bushy by, by nipping them back. And we go into the compost. Good. Starting to take shape, look. The next spot, identify that, where it's going to go. This was a white one. I think we could do another verbena now, don't you? I'm going to use a purple one this time. We once made some purple and white themed hanging baskets for somebody's wedding. We did the whole, in fact we did the whole garden centre, it was for the boss. It was for her wedding, we did the whole garden centre with purple and white as per her instructions and it looked fantastic. Um, and so we're kind of copying the same colour scheme for this basket now. So that's in that slot, we're going to miss this one and then into here. The next one, that was a verbena. We could do another brackets gum, couldn't we? The white one this time. These uh, particular varieties of this plant are quite a new introduction and they have proved to be absolutely fantastic. We're really impressed with them. Um, this is the name. Brackets gum. Brasco Violet and these Brachyscum Sir Daisy. The whites have always been a bit poor on these, but the, these particular ones we're, we're really impressed with them. They just flower like mad. So uh, we'll enjoy those. Like I'm just fettling through, not demolishing it, but shaking off the loose compost, making it the root ball more compact, and then gently teasing through the framework into the fluffy compost up to the edge of the ring. There we are. This is the next slot. What have we got? We've had verbena, brachyscum, so it's time for another pacopa. I think I was going to put the pink but this is where the yellow is. Now the yellow and the blue, we already said that makes a good contrast, so let's put that one hanging over there. This will come together and uh, where, where you can use contrasting colours in close proximity, they they sort of bounce off each other and make each other stand out. They really do complement each other in that way, even though uh, they, they're opposite colours. So that's it, in there, look. Tucked in, excellent. Miss a slot, next one is here. Scratch that compost back a little bit in the moss. So now we're on to verbena again. This is just a white one this time. A 
This has got flowers coming already as well. And with the verbenas, if you get these for your baskets, uh, they really go bushy in there, there, but they're quite quick growers, and so you can cut them quite hard. Well, if you could be bothered, you could put those in compost. Those would root, and you've got extra plants for your garden as well. But I've cut those back now, and where I've done them, instead of one shoot and one branch coming off here, they'll they'll double up. There'll be two from each one. So we had two, now there'll be four. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. There. We'd have to double check the maths because well, it's boring. There we are. And the last plant, this is the pink. It's a bit of an outlier, it's not purple and it's not white, but the pink it just helps to set off. Uh, it'll be easy to see when the when the basket's done, but just a little bit of pink brought in will help to make the other colours stand out and pop. Just help to lift them again by the contrast. But look, once again, sorry flowers, off you go. We're not ready for you yet. Just take them down like so. Taken off, gently tease through, nuzzled into that compost there, and that's all of our eight plants into the 16 holes. So once again, once they're there, we gently take the compost and make sure each set of roots, each plant is covered over with a good 25 mil or an inch of compost at least over them just to hold them in to hold them steady and what I'm going to do again is make a little bit of a mound in the middle not probably quite so big on this one but just so that the weight of that is holding those in while we do the next layer of moss I think we'll that's it. If you just pause that video there in a minute, Millie, we will. I'll finish that coffee because that's really enjoyable. From our award winning cafe, of course, on Russell's Garden Centre in the heart of the UK, Baggington. Uh, the Potting Shed Cafe. Uh, very well worth a visit if you're over this one. Uh, I'm going to finish my coffee. We'll finish this in a minute. Good, that was delicious. Right then, so now we're ready to put the top and final layer of moss and compost and then the top plants. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, when you look at the basket we've made already, there doesn't seem to be any room left for any moss, does there? So we're going to have to pay extra special attention to where we get this in so that we can make... We're going to bring it up about this height to make... Uh, 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 the, the, make the plant a bigger in effect, that's what we're doing with the, using the moss to do that. But now we're going to have to make sure the moss is really uh, secure and no gaps. And do it. And so doing it this way, I learned this from a friend, you, you can get so much more compost in, it really is worth the, the extra time to do it because we're going to make a basket that really stands out it's not going to be a boring basket by any means so once again the fingers down I'm tucking that down and I'm tucking it underneath this rail so that the moss isn't just placed on the top it's tucked right down to meet the other moss and to be held in firmly by that and that's that's okay that's good spin that I'm probably making this bit a little bit thicker, this pad, a little bit thicker than I did on the sides and certainly thicker than the bottom uh, moss, just because it has to definitely, definitely stay together. And it tucks, and I'm tucking it, tucking all the time, like tucking in a bed. Yeah. 
probably save the best part of the moss out of the bag for this uh, for this part really because the, the thinner scrappy stuff if you get any in the bag it can be used lower down but you, you want the good stuff at the top because it needs to hold together well, once the plants get going the roots will hold the whole thing in you could almost get by without the moss as daft as it sounds but it makes it look nice and does it but uh, to get them going this this needs to be nice and I can tuck it from the back I can tuck it from the front with the thumbs and fingers you've got to get in there and get that nice and nice and secure in it goes If you're local to the garden centre, we are in Baggington, it's near Coventry, UK. The, the, fam the Russells family have been here for, as we say, it's nearly a hundred years. Long, long time. If you are local, if you're passing by and you'd like to see how we do things or like some tips or pointers, or you'd like to have a go at making a basket if you come at the right time of year, just, just get in touch, you're always welcome. So uh, if we're around we can have a trap. Put the wall to right. Here we are. Look, tucked in now just all the way around and making sure that is held in nicely, tucked in. So like a bird's nest. Like that. But now look we can fit whereas before that was the top of the basket, now this is the top of the basket. We can fit all that extra compost in and all the extra plants. Now, this bit's a little bit different. I'm going to go put the compost at the edges very, very loosely because I've got a lot of plants. We've got to fit all those into this top bit here. When we make the baskets for sale obviously we do a lot of those pre-made we use much smaller plants plug plants and, and, and bring them on for a few weeks in the greenhouse but now we're using the big plants so we've got to think about that now there we are that's just loose in there but it's just enough to hold hold the moss um, right just clean my hands that's terrible isn't it this never comes up here. Wash your hands ten times if it's in there. Still. Right. So this is uh, just a little word about how, how we're going to think about the basket. Say this is it. In the centre of the basket, we want an upright plant that's going to be the main sort of, uh, not the focus, but the central point is going to reach up towards the basket. The, the chains come to a point, don't forget. So we want a plant that's going to start reaching towards those and, and, and be coming up. So we're going to want something central. And then once again, the, the other plants are going to be planted around that. And I kind of do it like this. And then like this in the gaps. And then the smaller ones you just sort of dot in as of where they fit really but you want to keep it sort of a, 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 a bit of a plan don't just stick them in willy-nilly because the basket will be lopsided or it will be you know off 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 center or just look weird really so we're going to use right in the side and that's the first plant to put in it's a central more upright plant and the ideal one to my mind is a fuchsia And to go with our theme, we've chosen this one, Fuchsia Upright Carmel Blue. Uh, that looks beautiful. So I've made a little hole for that. Again, once again. 
Settle that compost and root ball down a little bit, shake it off nice and gently to really reduce the size of look at those lovely healthy roots. Our oh, plants are just amazing. This is going to give so much pleasure. Right, so it's going in the compost. Just tuck to the bottom of the plant there, not too deep. Don't want to rot off before they get going. And that plant now is going to give our central uh, structure and, and make the whole thing sort of flow. So everything that goes around it now will be trailing or semi-trailing and we'll, 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 we'll work off of that. Now the plants we've chosen for that, uh, nearly always do, uh, immediately around the fuchsia we're going to put a geranium, which is an, uh, an upright geranium, it's a white one, and then two trailing geraniums, we've got a, a purple there, and another, oh this is beautiful, uh, it's a, a white with pink axis, beautiful that one, and the ivy leaf geraniums are the ones that trail over, that's why they call them ivy geraniums. And then uh, we've got then two trailing fuchsias. It doesn't say trailing on the front, but it says trailing on the back. Uh, that will then sort of come over the side. So that it's important to get the upright one in the middle um, on there. Now this is an upright geranium, this is true, but this will give um, a bit more structure. The hanging baskets nearly always have, when you hang them up, you think, oh, it, it, it has a natural back or a natural front to it where the plants look better. And I find that putting in a, an upright geranium or two really helps to give that sort of definition. So this is quite a big plant really, but I'm going to make it smaller. I'm just going to take off a couple of the lower leaves as well. That's it. There. So that's going in. Now I've actually got, I know I've drew four plants around the plant now. I've got five plants to go around this central one. Go reasonably close, but there's still a bit of breathing room. Uh, these plants will be packed in, they are tight in. There's a lot of plants going in, but it's going to be okay. The basket is going to look amazing. Again, this is one of the trailing geraniums. Just fettle that down. I'll pull all of the roots off. Take that lower leaf off though there, look. And that's going in. So I say we've got to fit five in equally spaced around the around the central fuchsia. So it's helpful sometimes to put a div where they're going to go. That's about right, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's about right. So I've got another one of these trailing geraniums. Well, I don't want them next to each other. So let's put that opposite. Opposite this one. tucked in there. Uh, you know what I will do actually Millie is just gently tease that geranium. I'm going to put that geranium here instead and then the, fuch the two trailing fuchsias can be separated a little bit better. There we are, that's better. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. You know when you make your own baskets and you know what you put in them and, and you can choose any colour theme you want, red, white and blue, uh, just white, they're popular for weddings as well. Um, red, orange and yellow, a hot basket. But when you put your own things in and you know what's coming, it's ex it gives a, a sense of anticipation and excitement, something to look forward to. And it, and it just well, you know, it keeps hope alive, doesn't it? Something to look forward to through the summer. Something to focus on that's positive, rewarding, and healthy to do. There we are, look at that. It's starting to take shape now, isn't it? 
in our plant scope. Excellent. Look at that. Right. So that's six plants out of the 14 that we chose. So now we're going to do another ring around those, sort of based around that. So if we had five slots before, what would we have there? One, two, three, four, five again. Oh, okay. Good. Now the next layer we put in uh, are trailing petunias. Um, and then I particularly like these in baskets as well. It's got a horrible name though, Petcoa. It's a cross between a petunia and a calibre coa, but these are relatively new, the last few years, and the performance in a basket in a pot in your garden is fantastic. The flowers stay clean, they're not sticky like petunias, and um, they're sort of semi-trailing. Um, they, they're really outstanding, so they're some of my favourite new additions. And look, the flowers are beautiful. However, they're going in the bin. Yeah, petunias are one of those things you can really prune them hard and they just say thank you I'll grow thicker for you now there we are so let's see I'm starting to go in the gaps between the plants but not right to the edge just yet that's going in there tucked in excellent I've got another one of those but this time a pink one again pink white with the purple and blues because this is going to make the other colours stand out. It's got a, a bit of a, a goldeny yellow centre to these as well. I think I'll put those opposite each other, as best as you can opposite with when you've got five slots. So let's go in there. Now we've got, we don't want to put the same things next to each other. So we had the white there, didn't we? The pink there. And then we've got this fabulous Petunia Glacia Sky. This is a trailing one. Trails 30 to 40 centimetres, but that's ideal over the edge here. It's purple and white is right on theme. Take that damaged leaf off. Shake out that. Now, try and, with the plants that are prolific and uh, floriferous, it's a hard word to say. Um, like petunias, try and space them around a bit so that the whole basket will fill up. And that's if you see the uh, the picture on the introduction of how we make the baskets, that's how we do them with the petunias. They, they are outstanding plants. They will flower the most. They will be the most prolific. So space them out around the basket. I think we're using three. We're using four in this basket, and they will be at um, you know almost at the sort of cardinal points: north, south, east, and west. Twelve, three, six, and nine. So we'll have one there, one there, then we've got four around. I hope that makes sense. So that they're nicely spent, because they, they will fill out the rest of the basket. This is a surfinia, which is a trailing type of petunia, and it's just a deep blue, a rich blue. They're all variations on a the theme, really. There we are. So that's going in there. That's a bit of compost built there. Okay, so now we get in there, we've just got four plants left. So that means there's ten in there already. And that makes it easy to spread these ones. Now these are a finer leafed uh, calibracoa, sometimes called million bells. And they have lots of small petunia light flowers, but lots of small of them. Um, but they're not as outstanding as the, as the petunia. So we'll put these in the gaps between. And then there's just another couple of uh, nemesia. And then this rather wonderful scavola. These have been absolutely excellent over the last couple of years. They've got unusual flowers that remind you of a bird of paradise. And they, this new breeding really works well. I'm very impressed with them. Once again, let's just thin out the plugs. We'll have one here. And because we did the four points for the petunias, then it's easy to find the four points for these. They just go between them. That was a, what colour was that one? That was a white. So we'll put over there a blue. Again, you can see the reason for choosing the young small plants. The, the roots are still very fresh. Get to the garden centre early. Don't, don't leave it too long. Get the good stuff. There we are. 
And these two are both blue anyway. So this is another Calibra Coa Deep Blue. I'm really excited to see this now. I don't want to wish the spring away, but through June, July, August, even September, this basket should be absolutely beautiful. We'll take pictures of it, of course, so you can see. And we'll put it up next year. And here's the last one. An Amesia. It's sometimes fragrant. Oh, let's chop him. They'll be back. So we haven't had to come, you can see, I've left plenty of room at the edge. There's a good, you know, sort of inch and a half, two inches there almost, of uh, unplanted area. Because these will come over, these will grow towards it. But there's still enough room for those plants to thrive in there and sort of, <laughs> sort of outcompete each other. Okay, excellent. Now that's nearly, nearly us done. There's two things left to do. One of them would be to put, if you're going to use them, the all-purpose uh, six-month feed tablets. They'd be ideal for this basket and probably push sort of four or five into the top of the compost if you didn't use the slow release. Uh, but it's definitely going to make a difference. The other thing, of course, you could do, and hanging baskets especially really like it, is a foliar feed. Um, of an evening or first thing in the morning but better in the evening over the leaves with a liquid feed and the, and the uh, hanging basket plants really take that in but you must feed your hanging baskets you must water your hanging baskets regularly uh, to get the big ones that we have we keep them on a watering system and they're watered at least twice a day and on the hot days sometimes more so what's the last thing well it's just the chain now this is easy to do if somebody helps you Shake out the chain. It's got we've got four four chains on this one. Uh, this is my spare pair of hands. So I'm going to take the back one to the back, front one to the front, and then decide which one goes which. That way and that way, and then find where the clip onto. Now this basket's got little there somewhere is that it oh yeah like a little let me see it like a little triangle for them to clip into and make sure this is absolutely secure and clipped in there's nothing worse than having the chain come off so that's not going to come off look that's in and we do it all the way around so once you get one in if there's four you know where the other holes will be but it's important to make sure these aren't twisted because that will make the basket hang funny. We put them nice and evenly around. Clipped on. Clipped on. And there is our luxury. It's quite heavy already, but that big bracket will do it with some good fixings into the wall. A luxury hanging basket which will look, I promise, absolutely sensational. If we water it and feed it as we said we're going to, it will look absolutely sensational um, and will beautify any house. I hope that's been useful to you step by step. If you've got any questions, as always, uh, feel free to ask away. I don't check the YouTube every day, but I, when I can, I will. Um, I say you're always welcome to pop into the nursery in Baggington. Uh, near Coventry in the UK. Uh, we're here most days. Uh, there's three nurseries on site actually. We've got a specialist bonsai nursery and we've got a specialist uh, perennial and grasses nursery here as well as our uh, Russell's itself with the uh, say award winning cafe and a full range of shrubs, planters, composts and uh, lots of experience and advice if you need it. Plus 26 acres of grounds to explore and gardens and wildflower meadows and riverside walks that you can enjoy as well. I hope that's been useful to you, our step-by-step -step video. If you like what we do, if you like the things, you want more tips as we go through the year, then please subscribe to the channel and a like always helps. It makes the videos more popular with YouTube and I'll go and hang this up. Thanks for watching.